Okay, so for the traction splinting patient, you'll be in or station, you'll be informed that you're applying a traction splint to a patient with a isolated mid shaft femur fracture. Um, and we'll say it's on the patient's uh, left leg. So I have my PPE on. I'm going to have my partner stabilize the injury. They're going to apply um, stabilization above and below the injury. And I will check CSMs. So I'll check for a pulse. I will ask them to wiggle their toes. And which toe am I grabbing? CSMs are intact. I will now apply the ankle hitch. Okay. So I'll apply the ankle hitch. With a femur, we really don't want to move the leg at all. So we will slide the ankle hitch up under the ankle. It's pretty tricky on carpet with the Velcro, but if you kind of keep it lifted or keep your hand underneath, that does help a lot. Okay. And we want to make sure we wrap this Velcro all the way around. These little padded pieces can fold out of the way to make it larger or smaller to fit the appropriate ankle. Okay. And we'll go ahead and have that stirrup extended out to make it easier to attach the splint. We're now ready to put the splint in place. So um, I want the wheel facing the foot. And I want the buckles facing up. It looks like we're in the correct position this time, so I don't need to turn around the padded piece. Okay, the ischial strap, I'm actually gonna feed under the knee. People have a gap under their knee. So I'll feed that under so I don't have to move the leg too much. And then we will shimmy this up yeah. around the hip. Yeah, no, that's good. So I'm gonna place this between the patient's legs, ask them if they're conscious. You can ask them to place it where it's comfortable. There's gonna be a lot of pressure applied to that padding. And I wanna pull this up and over the hip as high as I can get it. If I go straight over the leg when it's time to apply traction, it's probably gonna slide down and not hold traction. So I wanna come up and around up over the buttocks and up over the hip as best I can. This um, attaches like a motorcycle helmet strap. I'll go through both buckles and then back through the middle of the two. Okay, I wanna get that as tight as I possibly can. Remember, we're not using this for somebody with a top third femur. It has to be right in the middle. So this is not going to be over the injury. So I want to get this just as tight as I can. Okay, I'm now ready to attach the ankle hitch to the carabiner. So I'll go ahead and attach that. Make sure everything's in good order down here. And then I'll also tighten up this ankle hitch to shorten up the splint. I don't want it to be right up against the foot, but I don't want it to be too much of a gap because it's going to make the splint unnecessarily longer. Okay, I'm now going to apply um, manual and mechanical traction at the same time. I'm applying manual traction with my right arm. No one has pulled traction on this patient's leg yet. And I'm going to pull mechanical traction on my left arm on the splint. So I'm just going to grab the end of the splint, I'm going to grab the ankle, and I don't have anyone holding my patient here, so probably won't be able to pull full traction, but I'll pull as hard as I can. If I had a partner, I would have them stabilize, another partner, I'd have them stabilize the patient while I pull. Okay, get that as tight as you can. Go one more click to hold it in place, and then you can let go. I guess I pulled enough traction here because I'm holding about 13 pounds of traction. Um, so at that point, I'm now ready to apply the securing straps. So I will take the 24 inch strap, which is the shorter one. I'm gonna shimmy this under the knee, and then I will seesaw it down to the lower leg. You don't want to ever put straps over top of the knees. That gets very painful really quick. Okay, and then I'll take the longer strap. I'm also going to apply this one by um, sliding it underneath the gap under the knee. And then I'll shimmy it up. And this one can go right over top of the injury just because uh, it's so soft and stretchy and it'll actually help provide some compression to the injury. My strap's a little long so I'm going to fold it back under itself. Stretch that over top of the injury. Okay, at this point, I have secured my splint to my patient. So I will recheck CSMs. So I'm going to feel for a pedal pulse. Ask the patient to wiggle their toes. Which toe am I grabbing? At this point, I will secure my patient and my splint to a backboard. Um, and the reason for that is they have a broken femur, so I have to secure their knee and I have to secure their hip. At this point, my patient can still move their hip. So they're not fully um, immobilized. So I'm going to immobilize my patient to a long backboard, secure the splint and the patient to the backboard, recheck CSMs, and then we'll transport.